On Sunday, March 15th, just after 8 p.m., Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds announced she was recommending all Iowa schools close for four weeks to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Iowa schools would remain closed to in-person learning for the remainder of the year. Over the summer, schools created return to learn plans to help keep students and staff safe for the new school year. These plans included scenarios from in-person learning, hybrid education and online classes, keeping students and staff safety in mind. Tonight, we revisit one of those plans. The Sioux City Community School District was one of the only large school districts in Iowa to return with in-person classes during the new school year. I sat down with Superintendent Dr. Paul Gosman to look back on an unprecedented school year. March of 2020, um, when March 15th to be exact, when Governor Reynolds announced schools would be closing for at least four weeks. It wasn't until six days later that Sioux City had, or Woodbury County, I should say, reported their first positive case. At that time, did you think that schools would reopen? We knew that we would eventually close. We actually were most surprised at how early uh, we ended up receiving the announcement from the governor that we were going to close. I think we learned about that on a Sunday and it was, uh, you know, to apply to the very next day. Uh, and so, you know, of course we were hopeful back in those days that uh, we could find ways to mitigate the ch challenges of the virus and, and get kids back in school. But we immediately began working on ways in which we could deliver instruction, food, services to kids and families uh, in, in the challenges of the pandemic because we, we, of course, no one knew back then what it was going to be like. We just knew that it was severe. And in those first few weeks of the pandemic, what was your main concern? When the pandemic first occurred, we really learned one of our areas of core mission wasn't just academic achievement, but food service. And we immediately began a process where we would get food delivered in a safe way uh, to families, uh, most specifically to kids, any, any students uh, that are you know, zero to 18 years of age in uh, what I believe ended up being 27 different locations about our town. Uh, kind of a second area of focus for us was pushing connectivity out into neighborhoods because of course academic achievement is our core mission and so uh, you know we wanted to do all that we could to reach students as well as we could. So in the initial drafts of the return to learn plan masks were not required they were expected. So what I want to know is why wasn't the decision made right off the top to require masks? There are so many decision makers that were involved in the pieces of that puzzle but no one was stepping forward and saying this is the final decision. Um, I know it was my opinion that the only way we were going to be able to open the buildings and uh, consistently serve students is if we consistently have the same rules and regulations for everybody. The only way that seemed clear to me was with masks on. So you supported masks being required from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Overall, from August to now, how do you feel the number of cases have impacted the district as a whole? We had incredible cleaning protocol uh, and of course mandated the masks which didn't go over well with everybody when we first did it. I think we've become more accustomed to it now uh, and everywhere possible and it wasn't possible everywhere but everywhere we could we put in more social distancing and so yeah we had uh, a week or two where we had you know certainly higher percentages than than we would have liked uh, but we consistently stayed lower in terms of students or staff who were in the district, in their building, and showed signs of the virus on any given week. Uh, our numbers stayed really quite low, and uh, I think that's a credit to them. Anything you would have done differently this academic school year or changed? Oh, interesting question. You know, it, 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 when the pandemic started, uh, the news of, of what was changing was, was almost every couple of hours. And then as we kind of got into March last year, March uh, and April, then it became every couple of days things seemed to be changing, and then every couple of weeks. And so, you know, during that early time, um, you know, things were changing so rapidly that, that we did everything we could to communicate as thoroughly as possible and, and to get that information out. You know, now that I see where we are today, um, I, uh, you know, I, I suspect we could have uh, could always go back and find ways that we could have improved our digital connectivity to one another. Uh, although I, I do have to say this district is one that uh, seems to celebrate that in-person 
experience. Uh, and I'm thankful for that because I think kids learn best when they're in a classroom with a teacher. And, and uh, when we were finally able to open our doors and welcome people back, uh, you could sense that relief. And, and while we could have maybe stretched it further with digital offerings, I'm thankful for the school board, the support of the school board, and the work that they did to help us get back into session. To see my extended interview with Dr. Gosman, visit this story on our website, siouxlandnews.com.